apprenticeship training school was just co-ed Navy boot camp. The first week in AT school, one of the guys in class marched up and, and announced, you're going to be mine before this is over. As the only female in class, I was getting used to the guys working out their unresolved girl issues on me. <laughs> but this guy seemed different. I liked his style. I told him, you're cute. Give it your best shot. <laughs> his name was Jacob Reese. And he was a shorter and broader version of Steve McQueen. Blonde hair, blue eyes, dimple in his chin. Reese, I always called him Reese, never Jacob. Every day he would find me, say good morning, talk to me about class, tell me how pretty my eyes were, that he loved my smile or my laugh. He'd have some joke to tell. I always laughed. I'm not sure the joke was funny. But when he was around, it was easy to laugh. <laughs> About the time I was falling for Reese, he got, he got in trouble for hanging out with two of his shipmates who were drinking alcohol in the barracks. He got two weeks of restriction. Restriction meant we, that we couldn't go out on a date. The barracks had all the women on the second floor. Reese was on the third floor. Each floor had a large balcony. At the end of the day, we would go out on the balcony and talk. He'd hand me down a cigarette and then a light. We'd sit out there for a couple of hours. People would come and go, but we just kept talking until lights out. We could talk about anything, and I was falling in love. I, <laughs> <laughs> I knew where we were headed. Time was running out for us because we were finishing school, getting orders, and leaving. It was up in the air whether we, he would get off restriction and we would get to go out before we had to leave. We got one date. We went out for dinner and after that parked by a lake. We held hands, talked, and laughed. Suddenly, I looked in, in his eyes, closed mine, his lips met mine. It was soft and tender, our first kiss. My heart felt like it would burst if we waited any longer. I never thought having sex in the backseat of a car would be a cherished memory. <laughs> but it was the first time I was part of a mutual ador adoration while making love. It was sweet, delicious, a priceless treat. We stayed there as long as we could until we had to get back to base. We went to our barracks, went out on the balcony, and talked until lights out. After that, we both got our orders and had to leave by the end of the week. I was sad, but we promised to keep in touch. He knew I was going to New Orleans, I knew he was going to a ship in Charleston, South Carolina, and he promised, I'm coming to see you. Being on a ship, the Navy doesn't give time off. Communication was not easy back then. We, we wrote letters. He wrote me letters telling me what life was like on a ship, and he couldn't wait to see me. He included a picture of him signed on the back, outlaw again. <laughs> Love you, babe. I sent him letters soaked in perfume with racy pictures of me and a thin nighty. <laughs> I felt scandalous sending him those letters. I had to hope that there was still some perfume smell by the time he got it. Every once in a while, he would be able to call. He'd tell me how jealous the guys were when he'd get letters from me. They'd whistle and howl and say, Reese got a letter. Ooh, that letter smells good. <laughs> then pass it through as many guys as possible to sniff the perfume before Reese got to the letter. He'd shut up, snatch the letter out of their hands, tuck it inside of his jacket, and read it later, away from them. Reese and I didn't make any vows of chastity. We just said we'd see each other again. 
I dated casually and sometimes that included sex, but I didn't get attached to any of them until Brian came into the picture. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> he was different from the other guys and different from Reese. I knew he wanted something more for me than something more for me and I kept him at a distance. The letters from Reese slowed. I went 2 months without hearing from him. That hadn't happened before. Brian wanted more than I wanted to give. We were doing everything like we were in an exclusive relationship, but we weren't. One night, he finally said, I'll stay, but if I do, I'm not sleeping in my clothes. I hadn't heard from Reese. I hadn't heard from Reese. Maybe it was over. I had sex with Brian that night and stopped seeing other men. Then, a month later, Reese wrote me saying his leave got approved. He was coming for a whole week to stay with me in New Orleans. <laughs> I went to Brian and said, one of my friends from AT school is coming to visit. While they're here, I won't be able to see you. <laughs> Even though he got the picture and was upset, he wasn't confrontational about it. Reese was supposed to be at my apartment by 7.30. I stayed late at work because I couldn't imagine sitting in my apartment waiting for him to get there. I went to the bar upstairs, had a couple of drinks, and watch a thunderstorm roll in. I drove home through the thunder of lightning, sheets of rain coming down. The wind blew the rain sideways and I just clutched the steering wheel, hoping to make it home. I got to my apartment building before Reese was supposed to be there. I thought I'd run in, put myself together, get beautiful, but, <laughs> When I went around the corner of the breezeway, there he was. He was waiting outside my apartment. He had his pea coat on, the collar was turned up, and his hands were shoved deep into his coat pockets. He had a cigarette hanging out of the corner of his mouth. His Dixie cup, which is the white canvas round sailor hat, was tipped forward covering his eyes. He was leaning against the wall, he had one foot on the ground and the other leg was bent with his foot against the wall and his sea bag next to him. Ow. <laughs> he heard me and took, took his hat off and looked over my, over my way. The moment our eyes met, my heart was pierced. It wasn't far, but we ran to each other. I jumped into his arms. I buried my face in his neck. I inhaled the smell of him. He held me close. It had been such a long wait. When my feet reached the ground, I looked at his mischievous blue eyes and I smiled. He kissed me. It felt like he had always been there. He grabbed his sea bag and we went inside. He was dangerous, fearless, and somehow wise. The visit cemented our connection and we vowed to keep in touch. I cried when he got on the plane. I went home to my empty apartment and slept. I felt wrung out by the emotional ups and downs of the last few weeks, empty now. He called from a payphone before he got back on the ship to tell me he missed me already. They were getting underway for a six month deployment so I knew communication would be difficult. I sent him a couple of letters and then waited. I didn't hear anything from him for a week, two weeks, a month. Six weeks went by, no phone call, 
and no letter from Reese. I began to have doubts. Was I the only one in love? Had he found somebody else? I lost hope. I called Brian on his birthday. <laughs> It was the first time I had seen or talked to him since Reese had arrived. I asked him what he was doing for his birthday, and he had no plans. <laughs> I insisted he could not spend his birthday alone. He, ha he had to do something, and after he turned down my suggestions of calling his friends to go out, I offered to make him dinner. <laughs> he accepted my invite. He should have said something, you know, been angry with me, punished me, did something, but he didn't. He just said yes. I cooked something Reese taught me to make. <laughs> grilled, grilled steak with sauteed onions and peppers. Made a cake and got a cheap bottle of champagne, and after that, we were in a relationship again. <laughs> <laughs> Things moved quickly with Brian this time. He moved in shortly after his birthday. He proposed the night before my birthday, only three months later. <clears throat> I still thought of Reese every day. <laughs> I called the quarterdeck of his ship. The officer of the deck wouldn't confirm he was stationed on the ship. One time I even searched obituaries. Six months had gone by now and nothing. Life went on. I said yes to Brian when he proposed because he was there and Reese wasn't. I filled up the emptiness I felt with being busy. I went for long runs. I planned the wedding. I stayed focused at work. Then, a letter appeared in my inbox at work, addressed to BM3 Pamela Wardrop, New Orleans, Louisiana. No street address, no zip code. It was from Reese. He told me how he lost my address and how much he missed me and my letters. He had tried to find me, but he couldn't find an address. My number was unlisted in the phone book. He tried to go through the USO, but he had come up with nothing. So this was his last ditch effort to get in touch with me. For me, this was my proof that we felt the same for each other. I'm living with Brian, planning our wedding, and all I wanna do is be with Reese. I told Brian about the letter. I thought he would break up with me, but he told me to choose. He told me if I chose him, I had to burn Reese's letter right now. So I lit the letter on fire and I let it burn. I've had a total of four proposals, three engagements, two marriages and two divorces. Living together didn't work out either. <laughs> what I know is, is I don't like being on either side of rejection. I'll never know if, if love in the back seat of that car would have, could have been real love, but it, if there is an alternative universe, I hope I gave it a shot there with Reese. Holy cow. That is Vampire Steiner, Pamela Wardrop.